This is the Palisade, the all-new three-row crossover from Hyundai. It's loaded with features that any family would love. But how does it do when the roads get a bit rougher? We'll find out right now on Driving Sports TV. Before we get started on this review, I just want to take a quick moment to thank those of you that have subscribed in 2019. 2020 is looking amazing. If you haven't subscribed yet, please take this moment to do so. Now on with our review of the 2020 Hyundai Palisade. The three row crossover has become the dominant form of transportation in suburbs across America. So it was only a matter of time before Hyundai made something a bit larger and luxurious than the popular Santa Fe. The Palisade competes directly with the Honda Pilot, Toyota Highlander, Chevy Traverse, and even the Kia Telluride. The Kia is a cousin that shares quite a lot of parts, and we really liked the Telluride when we tested it just a couple months ago. So we do have high hopes for Hyundai's spin on the same formula. Pricing for the Palisade starts at $31,550. The model we have for testing is the loaded, limited all-wheel drive, which comes with the whole farm for $47,605 US dollars, including destination and delivery. The only option it's fitted with are the carpet floor mats, which added $160. Everything else you see here is standard, and it's got quite a lot. Under the hood is a 3.8 liter V6 good for 291 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. Yes, exactly the same output as you would find in the Kia Telluride. It also has an 8-speed automatic like the Telluride with paddle shifters. And though you can get all trims in two-wheel drive, our Limited has Hyundai's H-Track all-wheel drive system, which we'll be putting to the test later in this video. EPA rates this setup at 19 miles to the gallon city and 24 on the highway. That is with regular fuel. Maximum trailer weight is up to 5,000 pounds. The Palisade opens the rear door just by standing by the back with a key in your pocket. Once it opens, it reveals storage behind the third row of 18 cubic feet. With a push of a button, it folds down to reveal 45.8 cubic feet behind the second row. Fold all the rows flat for up to 86.4 cubic feet of capacity. The Palisade also has a bonus cubby under the floor with a convenient jack. The interior of the Palisade is pretty luxurious. It's so nice they probably should have just branded it as a Genesis. Access to the third row is easy for kids to manage with plenty of legroom and USB plugs to power devices. Adults can fit comfortably in the second row with seats that both slide and tilt. Seat warmers and coolers are on tap, plus personal HVAC. Shades give privacy when needed and USB sockets are easily accessible. All these features are just a preview of what's in store for the driver. The driver's seat is wrapped in Napa leather and features power controls plus heating and cooling. Start it up with a push of a button and the 12.3 inch digital dash springs to life. Yet again, the Palisade is punching above its class. Why isn't this a Genesis again? Somebody tell me. Infotainment is managed on the standard 10 and a quarter inch touchscreen. This features XM satellite radio, AM, FM, all that stuff, plus navigation with freeform search. A mobile charging pad is located in the main storage bin, which does feature one of the coolest pop-out cup holders I've ever seen. Anyhow, the pad down here provides wireless charging for compatible mobile devices. But to connect to the system, you will need to use a traditional USB cable. It does not support Wi-Fi CarPlay. It does, however, support cabled CarPlay and Android Auto. Of course, that also means you can use Siri voice commands with an Apple device. As you probably expected, the Telluride is loaded with advanced safety features, including a surround view camera system with rear cross traffic alerts. It also has blind spot identification, collision mitigation, and a heads up display. Plus, there's a feature that we first saw in the Toyota Sienna van, the ability to talk to the third row without having to yell. That's a win for parents right there. Like the Kia Telluride, the Palisade features several drive modes. This integrates into the main display as well as changing the gauges as modes are switched. These modes optimize engine, transmission, all-wheel drive system, and the traction control systems. Of course, the paddles will work to override the automatic transmission regardless of the current selected mode. Now let's just see how all these various modes affect the H-Track all-wheel drive system. Thank you. 
Smart allows a little wheel spin up front before balancing out power. With the all-wheel drive clutch lock on, it is a similar result. In sport mode with the center lock on, there's a lot more wheel spin in the back. Finally, with sport, lock, and traction control off, it does allow for the most amount of rear wheel spin on acceleration out of the gate. To see how these results translate into real-world adventure, we're going to have to head to the mountains, where we have a standard set of tests awaiting the Palisade. But first, let's see how it does with highway driving. I haven't quite decided if those turn signal cameras are awesome or annoying yet. Do you like or loathe them? Post a comment below. Now let's move on. I'm cruising along right now at 70 miles per hour. Actually, let's do it at 70 miles per hour. And it's great, it's comfortable. My seating position is good. Oop, let's actually use the gas pedal. The heads up display is clear and concise and it even gives me a readout telling me what the current speed limit is. I'm gonna dip behind this vehicle here and we're gonna try out the adaptive cruise control. Now to turn it on, I basically just hit cruise, I hit set. I set some target speed, it doesn't really matter what, so long as it's faster than what I'm currently going. And it'll now pace the vehicle in front of me. Now we are turning, so let's see how well the auto steering function works. You know, that's actually, that's pretty good. We're staying pretty much dead center. That exit ramp didn't, oh, then it gets a little weird. <laughs> that wasn't great. Okay, so let's let it steer. When it doesn't get too complicated, it does a pretty good job. Uh, however, when it gets thrown off, eh, then it has a little trouble finding its way. But right now we are steering centered. We're veering a little bit to the inside and it's now correcting. We're going into a corner and it's turning for us while meanwhile pacing that vehicle in front of us. Now the vehicle in front of us is changing lanes, which means we should accelerate. Telling me to put my hands on the wheel, which you really should do all the time. This is simply for demonstration purposes. We're going down, another slight bend in the road. You know, it's doing a really good job, as good as anybody really needs, because again, it's not an autopilot system. This is a way to reduce fatigue over long journeys uh, by not having to make all those little micro adjustments so common with that type of driving. The power from this V6 engine is really good. And it's kind of funny, because if you look at it spec for spec, it's so incredibly close. In fact, this whole vehicle is so similar to the Honda Pilot. It is clear which vehicle uh, they were looking at when they drew this one up. Uh, the wheelbase is almost exactly the same. The torque is exactly the same. Uh, the size is almost exactly the same. I mean, it is kind of insane. But where the Pilot has a choice of two different automatics, one being a six-speed on lower trim, a nine-speed on upper trim, this one has an eight-speed it basically splits the difference. Does it really make a huge difference? Well, probably not. I mean, nine speed, eight speed, eh. This still has pretty good economy. You're looking at 24 miles to the gallon on the highway and uh, 19 around town. In my review of the Palisade sibling, the Kia Telluride, I did say that the Kia Telluride now uses an internally developed all wheel drive system. According to Hyundai, that's not entirely true. They say, Hyundai says that both the Palisade and the Telluride do use an internally designed system. However, they license the technology from Magna Powertrain. So it is essentially still a Magna Powertrain system. And that's not a bad thing. It's just, you know, it's good to be accurate. On windy roads, even like this, it's actually a joy to drive. It never feels big. And for me, that is one of the biggest problems with large three row crossovers. They just are a bear to drive around town. This one, it feels much smaller than it really is. And I think that's honestly like the highest praise you can give a vehicle like this. I can feel what's going on. And then if I switch it into sport mode, uh, my gauges get ridiculous. 
It then maps the throttle, so it's more aggressive. It also is more aggressive with channeling power to the back wheels. Now, you never go over 50% to the back. It's just the way this is designed. Okay, let's do a zero to 60. So I'm gonna stop here. This is mostly level. I'm in sport mode. Uh, I'm in drive, there's no other settings. I'll preload the with a little bit. Three, two, one, go. Oh, that's not a bad bit of thrust. 40, 50, and 60. And there you have it, zero to 60 in the Hyundai Palisade. Now let's do what we've been planning all along, taking it off-road. Now I know the primary intention of the Palisade is not off-roading. However, it does have a capable all-wheel drive system and it has almost eight inches of ground clearance. And for me, that's good enough. Of course, to get to the off-road areas, we have to go down a forest road, uh, which is always its own kind of fun. potholes have gotten worse. Mm, yeah. It's like the sun is setting already and it's not even four yet. It's two. It's already getting dark out here. It's going to be a struggle getting this filmed over the winter months. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put it in sport because that'll push more power to the back. Although it'll never go over 50%. Uh, it can do individual wheel braking, and it will brake up to three wheels at the same time. It basically gives us an emulation of a differential by braking each individual wheel and redistributing power back into the system. If it slips with two wheels, it'll brake those two. If it slips with three, you can theoretically inch along with one wheel. That rattling, it's not the car, it's a tripod. Just FYI. Swoop around the corner here. Yeah, the traction control system doesn't want us to have too much fun there. That's okay. Again, target audience. But I was able to get that tripod to stop rattling. The big wheels on this are not gonna be ideal for off-road conditions, so I'm gonna have to be extra slow and extra cautious, lest I end up having to spend the night here in the woods. Of course, there's a camper van out here. Why wouldn't there be? Okay. Now on to our test road course. Let's see how she, she does. I'm gonna go ahead and switch it out of sport mode. We'll just put it into smart. Uh, there is no off-road dedicated mode, but it does have a hill descent control system, which we will test later. I'm gonna go ahead and lock the front and rear. So that basically means that it's a 50-50 split. It'll engage that center clutch, not a center differential, center clutch, uh, to push power to the back. Now, there are no real settings here. There's no off-road settings, so I'm just gonna keep it in smart, and I am gonna lock uh, the all-wheel drive split because, I mean, clearly we're gonna need some power to the back. What that does is it pushes 50% to the back all times. Um, and let's see if all times is as often as I really need it to be back there. Now, this is rolling on 20-inch wheels. Nervous? Yes, yes I am. Also, it doesn't have any special underbody protection. This, this is a vehicle that really wasn't intended for this, but when you get slippage in wheels like this, that's a very similar condition to driving in snow. It's just easier for me to get unstuck here. And we don't have snow yet, it's still too early in the season. Hmm. Wow, first line. No problem. Now I'm going to go ahead and put up all-wheel drive status on the right here so I can see what the all-wheel drive system is doing. Now this will brake up to three wheels simultaneously. Oh, that's nice. It shows me my steering position. 
doesn't give me any data, it just shows them on the graphic. Gotta watch that ground. Oh, 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 first challenge. Come on, wheel, it's my pedal all the way down, and free. You know, the gauge showed 50% of power going to the back the whole time. Uh -oh. This is slippery. Okay, can't go too quick. Wow, it's really shifting that power around, just like I saw on the Kia Telluride. This is a very, very competent system. Okay, finished the first stage, now it's on the second stage. This gets more difficult as we go up. Here's where I really start to have to consider the overhang on the front. Oh, which is exactly why I'm crawling along so slowly. I'd rather hear a tap than a crunch. Now I am taking the hard line on purpose. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, so this eight-speed transmission, it would be nice if I could crawl a little slower. I'm gonna have to, I have to kind of pulse a little bit, which isn't ideal. Okay, now the final stage. Now this should lift the rear uh, driver's side wheel. And there's a huge rock on the left. So I gotta be careful of that. Yep, there we go. We, oh! That was loud. Let's check what we've done. Okay, let's see what we're doing. Okay, now the overhang is really close. That's a problem. Oh, that's the rock I moved. Let's uh, take that out of the way. Yep, there we go. We, oh, okay. I think we're clear. Gotta watch that. Power is clearly shuffling around the system based on its ability to get through every obstacle. So why do the wheels spin more than some other systems? I did show a clip of this to Hyundai and they said that what we're seeing here is the wheel functioning like a flywheel with fine braking action applying just enough pressure to send the necessary power to the other wheels. They say this is a superior system to others like Subaru because it doesn't shock the drivetrain like a pulsing system would and it provides a more refined driving experience. Burn. <laughs> I just know it seems to work great. Hyundai also agreed that their smart drivetrain setting was ideal for this situation since it does know what's happening and will adjust accordingly. That's why they don't have a specific off-road mode. They believe that smart is intelligent enough to figure out when it's necessary. Okay, we got one wheel up, but I think we're fine. And here we go. Can we do it with one wheel completely in the air? Yes. <laughs> yes, we can. Wow. Okay, we got one more thing to test here, and that is hill descent control. Let's see how it does going down the hill. So I'm going to engage hill descent control there. It says lock downhill brake control on. Drive. Okay, it's grabbed them. It did take about five feet there before it really grabbed them properly. I am going to skip the big ditch because, oh no, actually I kind of have to hit the big ditch because otherwise that big rock is going to hit my center point. So we'll just take it real slow. I, I do have to put my foot on the brake at this point because otherwise I'm risking an oil pan and that would be very bad. There's a lot of weight. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so hill descent control, it's there, it works, it does fine. It's not for conditions like this though. Between the Telluride and the Palisade, the Kia is still a better off-road option. This is down to the increased ground clearance, although just a very little bit, at 8 inches, and better approach and departure angles on the Telluride. 
But if you do need real off-roading with three rows like genuine mud stomping rock climbing adventures, you should probably just get a Land Cruiser or forgo the third row altogether and get a Forerunner or a Jeep. And that's my look at the 2020 Hyundai Palisade. It is a fantastic entry in the three row family crossover market. Not only is it comfortable, it's technologically forward. It also has a really good all wheel drive system. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment. Which would you take, the Kia Telluride or the Hyundai Palisade? Post a comment below. Also share and like our video. We do them for you and we need the support. We'll see you next time.